Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start by thanking the organizers for the invitation. Uh, the title of my presentation is Evaluation of Filler Binder Properties of Modified Starches Derived from Flectrantus Estlantus by Direct Compression in Nitrogenazole Tablet Formulations. These are the synopsis of my presentation. And by way of introduction, Flectrantus Esculantus any brown, normally known as Livingstone potato, is actually a non popular African tuber. It is yellow member of the flower uh, mint of the mint family Lamiaceae with elongated tubers. It is cultivated basically because of its edible tubers, which contain reasonable amount of carbohydrate as a source of energy, especially in the rural areas. In terms of origin and geographical distribution, it is native to tropical Africa and was first cultivated in the Upper Niger Valley in Hausaland in Nigeria and in Central African Republic. It is popular among the Middle Belt region in Nigeria in states like Nasarawa, Plateau, and some part of Kaduna and Katsuna states. This is how it looks, the freshly uh, cultivated tuber, and this is how it looks when the outer cover is removed. <coughs> Justification of the research. All the rules of drug administration has been observed to be the most straightforward and most preferred for majority of patients. It also remains the largest slice of the overall drug market with over 52% share. Presently value at over 49 billion United States dollar, which is also expected to rise by the end of this year. Starch, in particular, is receiving attention as a pharmaceutical excipient due to its usefulness, stiffness, and inertness, especially the modified one, due to enhanced functionality, like flowability, compressibility, and so on. Direct compression, it is obvious that it's among the most economical and the simplest technique for tablet production, due to obvious reasons, like in cases of uh, drugs that are sensitive to moisture and drying, also, despite the advantage it's had, very few excipients are available for use in direct compression due, due to stringent requirements of flowability, compressibility, and stability as well. It is also obvious that few, SCP, uh, few literature are available on this particular tuber for use as pharmaceutical excipient. These are actually what prompted this particular research. And the aim of the study is to evaluate the tabulating property of the modified starches derived from this tuber as filler binder specifically by direct compression using metrindazole as a model drug. Why metrindazole? Because of its poor compressibility, and also to provide alternative source of directly compressible excipients. Materials and method, these are some of the experimental self samples used. The tuba obtained from the bomb area of Plateau State in Nigeria, metrindazole powder and the microcrystalline cellulose as a standard for comparison. Method, the sample, as earlier mentioned, was collected from the bomb area in Plateau State in Nigeria, one of the central part states in Nigeria. And the start was extracted actually by weight milling. The press tuba obtained were uh, identified in the, in the herbarium of the Department of Biological Sciences in Ahmadibela University. And then the tuba, the outer layer was removed from the tuba and then the start extracted by weight milling. Uh, it was uh, size reduced to smaller pieces and then ground. So the start was extracted using calico cloth with sufficient quantity of distilled water. It was then uh, 0 0.1 uh, normal sodium hydroxide solution was added to dissolve the proteinous content, which was later centrifuged also to get the uh, native starch. It was then uh, air dried for 24 hours and then later dried in hot air oven for one hour at 40 degrees centigrade. Then for the modification, we used three modifications, acid hydrolysis, pre-gelatinization, and ethanol dehydrated pre-gelatinization. Essentially for the acid hydrolysis, about 300 grams of the native starch was suspended in cold water, about 800 mils, and the reaction was initiated by addition of 28 mils of six normal concentrated HCl hydrochloric acid, and it was subjected to thermothetic water about set at 52 degrees centigrade, and the reaction was continuous stirring intermittently for 24 hours. Uh, later on, sufficient quantity of water was added, and the pH was adjusted using addition of uh, one normal sodium hydroxide solution. This was then uh, centrifuge, and then the starch was air dry for 24 hours and then dried in hot air oven for one hour at 40 degrees centigrade and then level as APS. Then for the pre-gelatinization, 150 grams of the native starch was suspended in one, li in one liter of water and then uh, subjected to thermostatic water about set at 90 degrees centigrade. The gelatinization was observed with continuous stirring until it gelatinized at about 66 degrees centigrade. 
The muslet was then thinly spread on a, a stainless steel tray and dried in hot air oven set at 60 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. This was then later milled using laboratory blender and level. For the ethanol dehydrated, the same procedure for the pregelatinization was followed, but instead of drying directly, 95% ethanol was added to dehydrate it and then uh, air dry in hot air oven, but this time around at 40 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. It was also milled and then uh, leveled. For the physical chemical and physical mechanical evaluation, for the flowability, uh, uh, moisture content, uh, all were done according to standard uh, and official procedures. While for the compressibility study, we use tablet compact density by so the log of compaction pressure. There is actually established relationship between the increase in compaction pressure and the increase in uh, compact uh, density of the tablet. For the FTR analysis, we, uh, for the, the drug recipient compatibility study, we use FTR analysis, where the pure drug alone was analyzed, and then the simple physical mixture of one to one ratio of the drug and the virus recipient developed was also made and then analyzed to see if there could be any change in terms of the fix. For the tablet formula, we use the target tablet for a weight of 550 milligram, Metronazole, we use 200 milligram, and then the filler binder, we use the MCC 101 as a standard, and then the virus modification. Uh, PPS stand for our pre nice starch, APS stand for acid hydrolyzed starch, while the PPE stand for ethanol dehydrated pre nice starch. Steric acid as lubricant and glidant, we use talc. A total bath size of 200 tablets were produced in each case, and then evaluated for the quality control of dissolution, disintegration, content uniformity, all according to official and standard procedures. Then the statistical analysis was done using SPSS version 20 and the differences between the mean and allies, followed by doing a test for multiple comparison. Now the results and discussion. This summarizes the physical chemical or organoleptic test on the native starch. The pregelatination temperature was found to be about 66 degrees centigrade, while the percentage yield of the uh, native starch was that 1.67 which is obviously fair for starch extracted from tuber and also test positive for iodine test. While this table uh, summarizes the physical test on the modified starches, the so percentage recovery yield for the acid aroli was lower compared to the other two modif uh, mod modifications, possibly due to the harsh condition it was subjected for 24 hours and the subsequent washing and rewashing. While this one summarizes the physical chemical properties of the modified starch in comparison with MCC 101, in terms of pliability, see the angle of repose and the pleurage. For the MCC, we are much high. And the higher the angle of repose, actually, the lower the pleurage, obviously. While if we consider the other modification, the angle of repose, we are all within the theoretical limit, justifying what was observed. Also, the pleurage was lower. And also, for the cast index and Hosner ratio, actually, they also measure pleurability. And the higher balu the value, the lower the pleurability. And as we can see, also, the value for the MCC was were much higher compared to the other modifications observed. This was the comparative FTR result for the metronidazole alone. These were the various peaks observed for the metronidazole alone. And then this was the metronidazole and the acid hydrolyzed starch. This one was the metronidazole and the pregelatinized starch, the peaks observed. While this one was the metronidazole and the ethanol dehydrated pregelatinized starch. This were the, the peaks were merely so far in position of the pure drug alone. While this is a plot of the log of compaction pressure versus the tablet compact density, as I mentioned earlier, the slope actually generated from this explained the compressibility index of the material. And the higher the slope, the higher the value of the slope, the higher the compressibility, with the MCC still being the, uh, ha having the highest uh, compressibility. As uh, we can see from this uh, uh, MCC, the slope is that the highest compressibility followed by the acid hydrolyzed. APS with the PPE having the list. While this is the in vitro dissolution profile of the virus formulation, the tablets generated, the BP specifies that for the conventional tablets, 75% of the drug should be released in food within 45 minutes. And as we can see here, the T50 and T90 for these two formulations, the acid hydrolyzed and the pregelatinized starch here, these two, the T50 and T90 were achieved both in less than 10 minutes. While for the ethanol dehydrated pregelatinized starch, this, the T50 was achieved in almost getting to 40 minutes, while the T90 was achieved in almost, uh, T90 was achieved in almost getting to one hour. Obviously, it does not comply with the BP specification. While for the MCC, the standard, even 
Not up to 30% of the drug was actually released even after one hour of the dissolution study, which also did not comply with the BFE specification. While this one summarizes the physical chemical or the quality control test conducted on the Bayros uh, formulation, the tablet formulation. So you can see also the disintegration time. The BFE also specified that for uncoated tablets, it, was, it should disintegrate within 15 minutes. For these two, pregelatinized and acid hydrolyzed, not up to five minutes, actually, they disintegrate very fast. But these uh, two PPE and uh, microcrystalline, they actually have a longer disintegration time. So the content uniformity as well, the BFE and USF, USP specify that for tablet weighing above 250 milligram, actually, the range of 95 to 105% is allowed. And the, almost all the formulation fall within the allow limits. For the friability, we can see for the pregelatinized um, pre actually it has a high value for friability, indicating that it may not actually withstand uh, rigorous condition of transportation and the core. In summary, modified starches of this particular tuber produce excipient of good physiochemical properties such as friability, swelling capacity, and hydration capacity. And also the FTR analysis indicate that there was no chemical interaction between the drug and the mo various modification because mere sulfuron positions were observed in the various fix. However, metronazole tablet produced from this modified starch exhibited good quality control properties. In conclusion, the acid hydrolyzed that produced the best metronazole tablets of better quality compared to MCC 101 and other two modification. Therefore, APS is a good directly compressible filler binder in conventional tablet formulation. Recommendation, I would like to recommend that the pregelatinized starch should be evaluated for use in uh, this inter, uh, um, tablet as a tablet disintegrant or in the formulation or really dispersible tablet based on the dissolution and disintegration profile of uh, its behavior observed. Uh, also, the ethanol generated pregelatinized starch should be evaluated or explored in sustained release or modified release tablet formulation based on also the dissolution profile observed. It was actually observed a, a gelatinous layer was formed during the dissolution test. This is one of the FIFA published out of the work titled Compaction and Compressibility Characteristics of Modified Stars Derived from this tuber by direct compression. I would like to acknowledge the support I received from my university, Bayer University Kano, and also from my supervisors, uh, from Hassan Musa and Dr. A.K. Olusul. Thank you for your kind time. Any questions for? What is left of a starch after 24 hours acid hydrolysis with six normal HCl? I have shown the percentage recovery yield about 74%. Hmm? I've shown the percentage recovery yield. No, no, I, I'm referring now to the chain length. The chain. Do we still have starch after such a long acid hydrolysis? E exactly, sir. Yeah? Exactly. So why do a hydrolysis in the first place? We are trying to uh, modify the pluability and maybe the, the, and the compatibility. But you, you, you are hydrolyzing the glycosidic bonds. Sir? You are hydrolyzing the glycosidic bonds. Exactly. I, yeah, but I, uh, how? Later, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for Dr. Mohammed? Thank you very much. I'd like to present you with this uh, certificate Thank you. for your participation. Thank you.